This week, for the first time, Tesla welcomed non-Tesla owners in Norway and France into the Tesla supercharger world, allowing CCS-compatible electric cars in each country to officially use Tesla's supercharger network for the very first time. It follows a pilot project from November last year when Tesla opened up just 10 supercharger sites to non-Tesla cars in the Netherlands and heralds a much wider expansion in the coming months. Today, I'm going to examine who is to thank for this, talk about what the experience entails, detail where it differs from a supercharger experience for a Tesla owner, and ask when we can expect the network to open up in other countries. It's no secret that Tesla's supercharger network is the most envied electric vehicle charging network in the world. From its incredible speed through to the breathtaking design of that sleek, slender connector, and the way it requires no RFID cards to use as you press the supercharger button to flip open the port Nikki. door and... <laughs> what? This is right. <sighs> Sorry, one, one second. Amusement was high. Advise you drop the sexy music. Not everyone understands British humour. No more jokes about Tesla connectors. Tesla's supercharger network is just one of the many reasons Tesla has dominated electric vehicle sales for the last decade, engineered to offer multiple redundancies, thanks to the modular design of each supercharger stall and the fact that every site features multiple stalls, it was handling out satisfaction with every charge when other electric vehicle charging networks were still trying to figure out why EV customers were getting stranded at their single stall per location outfits. And for folks coming to electric vehicles for the very first time, Tesla's supercharger network is by far the easiest and most convenient way to refuel. It's one of several reasons why so many first time EV owners who can afford to go for a Tesla. Luckily, charging for non-Tesla electric vehicles has changed dramatically in recent years, with companies like Electrify America in the US and Ionity in Europe adopting Tesla's multiple stall approach, offering a far greater chance that customers will be able to charge and get on their way. And unlike days of old, where every network needed its own RFID card, roaming agreements mean that many charging providers in the same market allow cross-compatibility for their customers, often with smartphone-activated sessions. But Tesla's global supercharger network is still the largest charging network there is, meaning you're more likely to happen upon a Tesla supercharger than a rapid charger from any other network. In Europe especially, where Tesla's supercharger network uses the same CCS connector found on other rapid charging EVs, thanks to European legislation, that fact has been a big frustration because there's been no mechanical or electrical barrier to charging compatibility other than Tesla having what amounts to a walled garden network that you've not been able to access unless you've been driving a Tesla. But luckily for non-Tesla owners, that's now changed. Thanks to a combination of European legislation and a massive pot of funding earmarked for expanding brand agnostic charging for EVs. The idea of Tesla opening up its network to non-Teslas though isn't exactly new. Tesla and Elon Musk has always stated that any automaker could make use of its supercharger protocol in their vehicles and even open or share a compatible charging network. But in order to do that, there were some legal requirements involving intellectual property and agreeing not to take legal action against rivals that, to date, no automaker has taken Tesla up on, despite Tesla's originally well-intentioned but legally demanding attempts to open up its network for everyone. During a 2018 earnings call, Elon Musk reiterated that Tesla's supercharging network was, quote, not a walled garden, but nothing appeared to change, at least not at first. In the US, where Tesla has used its own proprietary connector since the supercharger network launched, Tesla's network continued to operate as it had previously. But that same year, 2018, saw a change to Tesla's European supercharger network. Ahead of the European launch of Model 3 the very next year, Tesla began to install CCS charging connectors at new and existing supercharger locations. The reason? A new EU law that required all newly launching EVs with rapid charging to use CCS rapid charging connectors. In order to comply, Tesla had to switch to CCS for its charging network. Prior to this, 
Tesla had used a modified Type 2 connector on its European cars, again to satisfy European law, but that had resulted in its own challenges. Uh, basically, Tesla's connector was similar enough to confuse first-time EV owners into plugging their EVs into a Tesla supercharger, but mechanically dissimilar enough to cause said cars to become wedged onto the end of a Tesla plug like a... Nope. Nikki, bad Nikki, do not make more jokes. <clears throat> European law drove Tesla to switch to CCS, and it was European law again in 2020 which caused Tesla to open up some supercharger sites as free vend to CCS compatible non Tesla EVs. In that instance, new Tesla supercharger locations were the ones that had to ensure CCS charging of non Teslas could take place due to another change in law requiring new charging sites support the European standard and allow EVs of any compatible plug type to charge there. In 2021, Tesla confirmed it would open up its European supercharger network to non-Tesla CCS cars, and it was working on a modification to its app to make that a reality. This time, the reasons for Tesla's actions were partly due to European law and partly due to the humongous amounts of money various European countries are now making available to charging providers for expanding EV charging infrastructure. Those funds, however, come with a caveat. Networks who apply for the funding must offer vehicle agnostic charging. So it makes good business sense for Tesla to open up its network in Europe, and as Winter detailed in a video on this channel back in November, switching to CCS in North America in the not too distant future. Especially with the recently passed infrastructure bill offering huge sums of money to expand DC quick charging infrastructure that is. But enough history, to the actual charging experience. For non-Tesla customers with a CCS car who live in Norway and France, it's now possible to download the Tesla smartphone app and sign up for a Tesla account. In order to use the Tesla supercharger network, you'll need to have a valid payment method on file with Tesla. When you arrive at a supercharger site, you'll then need to park up at a stall and sign into your Tesla app. Plug in, follow the app instructions to authenticate, and start your charge. Voila! You are now sipping on Elon's electrons. The process for non-Teslas is a little more complicated than for Tesla owners because Tesla superchargers use a modified version of the plug and charge protocol to identify each car and carry out payment authentication. Your non-Tesla may or may not have plug and charge, and for now, all non-Teslas, even those with plug and charge, have to authenticate through the app. Will you charge more quickly than anywhere else? Well, since you are plugged into a Tesla supercharger, many of which are capable of 250 kilowatts of power transfer, the charging rate is actually determined by your car, not the supercharger. If you have a newer car that can, say, support 150 kilowatts charging, you'll get 150 kilowatts charging. But if your car just supports 50, that's where you'll be stuck. Also, because I feel I need to mention it, if you have a car with 800 volt charging capability, like a Porsche Taycan or one of the new cars from Hyundai or Kia, you won't be able to do 800 volt charging because Tesla's supercharger network right now is not 800 volt compatible. It maxes out at 400 volts, despite having a pretty high power transfer rate. As to the costs, well, it's not cheap. Tesla owners will get cheaper charging rates than non-Tesla owners because, to be blunt, if you bought a Tesla, you paid towards the supercharger network when you purchased your car, and other people haven't. We've heard some folk claim on social media that Tesla is charging upwards of one euro per kilowatt hour. Additionally, just like Tesla customers, you'll also be charged if your car sits in a supercharger stall after you're done charging. So be a good citizen and move on when you're finished. But what if you're from outside of those three countries, the Netherlands, Norway and France, and you want to make use of the supercharger network in those countries? For now, you cannot use Tesla's network, but we expect most of Tesla's European supercharger networks to open to non-Teslas this year, with other CCS countries following suit in fairly short order, especially if it proves lucrative for Tesla. As for North America, where Tesla still uses its own connector, 
As we've said before, we think it's only a matter of time, but given how busy some West Coast superchargers get, it might not always be the quickest way to charge your EV. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.